Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, we're joined by Dave Softy Mahler, KJR Radio in Seattle, our go-to, and maybe our best friend that we love the most in the media. How about that? Yeah. yeah, that's because I'm the only one that agrees to keep coming on your stupid show all, over and over again. <laughs> Why? Everyone else Why? says take a hike. Yeah. Hey, by the way, yes, uh, by the way, let me ask you a question. So you mentioned the Masters there. You you seem like Smokey, the kind of guy that's got some contacts at Augusta National Golf Club. Can you help me get Masters tickets? Have you really never been to Augusta? No, never. Let's talk. I, I mean, Done. like, I don't have somebody inside of the Butler cabin, but I'm going to tell you how you can get there. And it, it, especially with your media outlet, that should not be as difficult, but I know yeah. it can be. But I can tell you how I've been able to go. And, it, it, you know, and, and I've even broadcast. Not from the grounds, wow. but right outside yeah. the grounds. I, I'll, we'll, we'll talk, yeah. okay? All right? No, for sure. And I, I, I actually know somebody who's a member there. His name is Bill Gates. Uh, <laughs> I know him, but he doesn't know me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, one, of our, uh, one of our listeners, viewers, uh, Chris Clark said, my wife knows Softy from her days yeah. growing up in Seattle. Tell him that Jen Kramer said hello. Oh, yeah. I know Jen Kramer. Jennifer Kramer's father was a firefighter. And I remember I actually, the day I got my driver's license, I tried to give Jennifer Kramer a ride home, and her dad took one look at me and said, no, <laughs> you're not going home with that guy. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I've known, I've known Jennifer for a long, long time. All right. So let's get, how much is the Pac-12's future? I know Seattle is a pro sports town, but I know Washington means a lot, the Huskies. Yeah. And you're entrenched in that. How much of all of whatever is the future is on the radar up in, uh, in, in Washington? Well, it's huge, right? I mean, you got the Pac-12, first of all, trying to scramble to get a media rights deal. And we have no idea why that's taken so long. I mean, I got, I got some kind of maybe hunches as to why it's taken so long, because I think the main reason is that the Pac-12 or Pac-10 remaining presidents and Commissioner Klyovkov are – pretty underwhelmed with what is out there financially you know I, I i think they thought they would get a lot more than uh, than what's been offered so far on the table you know i saw where nbc is off the table cbs is off the table i think what they're trying to avoid guys is having to go almost exclusively full-time to streaming services like amazon and if they want the money they're looking for they may not have any choice but to go out and do something like that i mean you guys know that's the that's the wave of the future, right? It's streaming. Um, but right now you got the NFL games on Thursday, and that's about it. So it would be a, kind of a pioneering deal if the Pac-12 became the first uh, Power 5 conference to almost go exclusively on Amazon. But I think they're trying to stay away from that. But the problem is they've been a little bit underwhelmed financially with what's been offered, and I'm not surprised by that. You're talking about a conference that just lost Los Angeles for crying out loud. I mean, what did they think? that they would lose USC and UCLA and the media right value would go up, that they'd make more money after losing Los Angeles. So this is what happens when you lose your marquee market, man, when you lose, uh, you know, two of your three or four biggest names in the conference, you got to settle for whatever table scraps are left over. And that's what George Klyovkov and the other 10 remaining presidents are doing right now. For Washington and Oregon in particular, the other – the other eight can maybe have a little bit different feelings, but the, the fact that they have been the driving forces even the last decade where UC, USC and UCLA didn't happen until this past year where they looked like, right. you know, they were going to help the conference look good on the field. Um, but do they really feel like they should be committed to this for the long term? And does that kind of hurt things as well? Because, you know, you could say like, yeah, for now we're cool, but you yeah. know, I don't want to yeah. marry you forever. No, I think I think I think schools like Washington and Oregon, they're not in it for the long haul at all, unless they find a reason to be. And the reason to be would be a bigger share of the pie than the other remaining eight schools in the conference. And I don't know if that's going to happen. I can tell you this right now that Washington, if they were offered membership in the Big Ten, they would leave tomorrow. If Oregon was offered Big Ten membership, they would leave tomorrow. That's not on the table right now, though, for them. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be for a while. I mean, look, you know, USC and UCLA right now in the Big Ten have a freaking monopoly over the West Coast. I mean, if you're if you're growing up on the West Coast, you're playing high school football on the West Coast, and you want to play in a big-time Power Five national champion Final Four contending year-in and year-out conference, 
You're going to play football in the Big Ten. You're going to play football for USC and UCLA. I mean, they've got much more cachet right now than the remaining 10 teams do in the conference. So if I'm USC and UCLA, I don't want UW and Oregon coming with me because I want the West Coast for myself. Softy, do you think that there was uh... – uh, I mean, obviously there was a better chance when Kevin War was in charge, but how close do you think that ever really got all the scuttlebutt around Washington and yeah. Oregon and Big Ten? I don't think it was very much, to be honest with you. I think it's just kind of a natural next step and an assumption that when USC and UCLA take off that there's more to come. And, I mean, look, UW and Oregon would be the next natural two to go. There's no question about that unless they're talking about – you know, going for the academics and, uh, you know, Stanford, California would be schools that obviously would potentially be looked at to make a run in that regard. But I I don't think you, that UW guys in Oregon really were even remotely considered much on the table uh, when the first, uh, you know, go round uh, with, with expansion came on board between USC and UCLA for exactly what I just talked about. I think those guys wanted this move by themselves. And if you're USC, look, you know that UCLA is not really a great football school. They've had their basketball prowess, and USC has had their football prowess. But if you're USC, who are you really competing with on the West Coast for recruits when it comes to playing in the Big Ten? You're competing with nobody. I mean, you've got, you've got an absolute monopoly in your backyard on this thing if you're USC. So for them and UCLA, I think it's a, it's a total game changer. And then you start to think about the, the scheduling. I mean, you guys saw Ohio State bailed out of a home-and-home home with UW in 24 and 25, and I think you'll see more of that happening, to be honest with you, in college football and not just on the West Coast. So do you then, – then on the USC-UCLA thing, do, that yeah. they, do, they don't want Oregon and Washington in the Big Ten, right? They don't, they don't want them anywhere. I don't anywhere think they to, do yeah. right now yeah. unless, unless Dave gets to a point where the travel is just so ridiculous where they just feel like, hey, we're putting too much of a stress on our kids. I mean, Dave, the nearest Big Ten city to L.A. is Lincoln, Nebraska, and it's 1,500 miles away. That's the shortest trip mm. that USC and UCLA have right now in conference is 1,500 miles, okay? You're talking about a school that played California and Stanford and Oregon uh, and Arizona and Arizona State. They were, you know, two-hour plane rides. Now you're talking about 1,500 miles to have to get halfway across the country. So if they wake up one day and they realize, hey, we can't do the charter thing because that's too expensive and nobody's stepping up to pay for that or sponsor that, we're putting too much stress on our kids. And it's not just football. We all sit around and focus on football, obviously, for obvious reasons. It's the moneymaker. But what about the other sports? What about the non-revenue sports having to fly 1,500 miles and 3,000 miles away to Rutgers and 2,000 miles away to Ann Arbor and Columbus, Ohio, and, you know, Happy Valley, Pennsylvania is 2,000 miles away. So all of a sudden, man, th- this becomes a much bigger undertaking for the kids. There's no question about that. So how do you feel – that the teams like Washington, Oregon, or I mean, even like the four corner schools that might start feeling a little antsy if this thing right. goes all streaming and streaming right now, like you said, it's the wave of the future, but right. the Pac-12 doesn't need the wave of the future. They need the wave of now. Right. So if it right. goes all streaming, well, how do they feel like five years from now? Yeah, I think I think the money at first is going to be lesser than what they're hoping for. The way they will spin it, they will spin it as their pioneers. That's the way they'll spin it, right? They'll spin it as, hey, this is where this is going. We're going to try to appeal to the youth out there, blah, blah, blah. I, I think that's nonsense. I, I, I think they would take the biggest deal they could find, and the best deal they could find might be on Amazon. It might be on Roku or Fubo or Hulu or whatever. I mean, you have all the the younger generation that are going streaming and then you have all the dinosaurs like Dave that can't even use their own cable remote for crying out loud. I'm right. I, you're right. True. You're, you're True. right. So we're trying to figure this out. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's just nuts how this whole thing is totally changed. People cut the cord and go into all these different streaming sticks and boxes and services. And even satellite seems to be dead for God's sake. Everyone's going to the internet. So I don't know, guys, I, I, I just think you got to, you got a bunch of people and a bunch of presidents in this conference that have never really made sports or football a real priority. Uh, There's just not the passion here on the West coast as there is in the Midwest and Texas and East, you know, uh, SEC and places like that. And people always ask for examples of what I'm talking about when I say that, well, uh, the best one I can give you is COVID, right? I mean, the SEC played right through COVID. They couldn't care less about COVID. They were, they, they were willing to die 
to play football. <laughs> and meantime, people on the West Coast were freaking out, locking themselves in their homes, going bananas, covering their faces with six different types of masks, not wanting to leave their house, not allowing people to watch the games in person. They played a stupid four-game schedule that nobody cared about. Meantime, the rest of college football – is just humming along like nothing happened, and the Pac-12 is the one that's, you know, bending over and cowering to this virus, uh, which, again, this is not a commentary on COVID. This is just a commentary on reality. We know that that happened. We know when COVID hit that the Pac-12 said, we're out. We're not, we're not going to be a part of this. And I think right then and there, the rest of the country kind of showed how much college football meant to them. Well, you talked a second ago about them um, saying you know, they'll, they'll be away with you. They tried to do that with a network before, right? And the Pac-12 right. network blew up in their face because they couldn't get right. direct TV on board. That's part of it. A uh, big part of it was the distribution, no question. Uh, most people did not even have the Pac-12 network. The programming was bad. They had Rick Neuheisel on there for a while. He quit, went to CBS, and they never replaced him. I mean, the whole thing is, if you've ever watched the Pac-12 Network, and I don't know how much of that you guys watch down there, and if you are watching the Pac-12 Network, I would ask, why are you watching the Pac-12 Network? (laughs) Maybe because the Big Ten Network or the uh, Big 12 Network was down that day. That's why you watch the Pac-12. But the programming is horrible. I I mean, it's just one big propaganda machine for the conference. You know, it's just ridiculous, the stuff they put on there. Uh, you know, I hate to use profanity, but it's just a bunch of ass kissers that, that just completely just, you know, tell you what the conference wants you to hear. Uh, like they're trying to hypnotize the audience and people see right through that crap, man. So the programming was bad. The distribution was bad. The personalities were not very good. And it's kind of falling apart. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if there's even going to be a Pac-12 network in the next three or five years. Softy, how would people react? And, and I'm sure you've, you've heard some reactions already just to the, the rumors. But if, in fact, San Diego State and SMU yeah. were to become new members of yeah. the Pac-12, what would be the reaction to that? Yeah. Well, I just, I, I mean, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going from USC and UCLA to San Diego State and SMU, right? I mean, just, you know, think of the, think of the greatest steakhouse in Texas or the greatest steakhouse in Dallas or whatever and then decide that you're going to go to an Arby's instead. I mean, that's what it is. That's what it is. I yeah. mean, no no disrespect to San Diego State or SMU, but they're not UCLA, and they're not USC, and they're never going to be USC or UCLA. And frankly, there's nothing they could do besides poaching another big-time school from another big-time conference to replace those schools. So I think the optics on the surface would look terrible of bringing on schools like that. I think the conference would be – uh, you know, uh, uh, looking more and more like the Mountain West uh, or the WAC every single day if they brought on schools like that. I would almost rather just stay at 10, to be honest with you, than, than bring those schools on. I mean, what do you really get if you bring on SMU? I mean, you guys tell me. They're like, what, fifth fiddle in Dallas behind Texas, Texas Tech? I mean, even, you know, uh, Texas A&M? I mean, there's more Houston fans there than there are SMU. I mean, how, how big deep. is SMU in Dallas? I say Oklahoma's bigger than SMU oh, no. in Dallas. I think Not even I, close. Yeah, I think it's Texas yeah. and Oklahoma. It, it's Tech. It's, it's, Baylor's got a nice contingent. It's down there, there. yeah. yeah it's Baylor? down there. Yeah. I mean, they're, I mean, guys, they're, 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 they're like sixth on the on the on the chart, right? I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay, so they have a big endowment, whatever. That's fine, but you know, if you're going to get a kid from the Dallas Texas area who's going to consider SMU. He probably would have jumped at the chance to go to Washington anyway over SMU or a place like Oregon, right? Or right. a place like Stanford. So I don't know how much you really bring on. I mean, the Dallas network, I mean, so, uh, or the Dallas TV market, how many people are really watching SMU football in Dallas? That's like somebody saying, hey, let's bring on Seattle U to play basketball because they're in Seattle. Nobody watches Seattle U basketball in Seattle. Just because they're in Seattle doesn't mean they're watching. Just because they're in Dallas doesn't mean they're watching. So, I mean, I'm, I'm even more convinced now after hearing you guys talk about how kind of irrelevant they are. Well, it's a great school, no question. And they were at least, if there would have been more additions in the Big 12, they were at least a possibility, but that didn't work out, and there's reasons right. for that as well. Right. You know well, what I think of, by the way, Dave, when I when I think of SMU, I think it's four, four words, death penalty and Eric Dickerson. That's what I think of. Yeah, which now is legal, which is now legal. Right. They, they could have won with Craig James and Eric Dickerson now, and it would have been fair to do that. Is there right. any kind of an uh, – from the Washington, University of Washington perspective, 
when they look at the Big 12, and the Big 12 set, they're fine, and, and we know about whatever may happen with the Pac-12, but is there any kind of looking down at anyone in the Big 12 if, in fact, that was the only life raft left? I mean, maybe a little bit. I mean, I don't know. I mean, now that Texas and Oklahoma are taken off, mm -hmm. the Big 12 obviously is not what they used to be. I, I don't think anybody's going to argue with that, right? I mean, yeah, no. you got you got Oklahoma State, you got Baylor, you got Texas Tech, you got some some good basketball schools lately. I mean, Texas Tech and Baylor have been to what you know two of the last three Final Fours and Kansas won a championship, right? Yeah, so there's there's some tradition there, but. I think it'd be different if it was Texas and Oklahoma, Washington and Oregon. To me, that's a totally different deal than it is with those two teams going to the SEC. So I don't know. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of trial and error. You know, I, I think a lot of people want to know, and I, I get it. You know, what does this look like? Will it work? I mean, who has any idea, right? right. Who has any idea if Texas and Oklahoma in a decade from now are going to regret going to the SEC? And having to deal with, you know, Alabama and Georgia and Florida and Tennessee and schools like that. Uh, are we talking about just you know, two big, gigantic super conferences that, if they're lucky, they play each other in the non-conference and that's it? I mean, if you're a school like Ohio State, and look, you know, I'm bummed out that Ohio State dropped that scheduled series with UW in mm -hmm. 24 and 25, but I get it. I mean, they've got USC. They've got Michigan. They've got Penn State. They've got Wisconsin. They've got Nebraska hopefully turning things around in Lincoln. Schools like that. they got plenty of Washingtons, if you will, on their conference schedule. They don't need them in September. SEC has plenty of great schools in the conference schedule. Do they really need to be risking their resume and, you know, play a team like Oregon or UW or even Michigan or Ohio State? and risk a lot. So I'm just concerned that these great non-conference games that we've come to love in September are going to eventually go away. Wait until you see who, who Ohio State replaces UW with, and then give me a call. Yeah. Uh, Softy, uh, throughout the chat room, uh, on our 365 Sports chat room, you've just basically forced yourself to join us every week because everybody, <laughs> every single person, if they'd never heard you before, uh, you, you're now locked in. So deal with it. You're in. And checks in the mail, right? Yeah, the, and the checks in the mail, and yeah. Hey, I, I one thing I learned today. Why the hell have we had not had you on more recently? But I was curious. I'm thinking. I go. We've looked at other options of the Pac-12. We've looked at other schools and what they think. The four corners, whoever yeah. hadn't had you on about this, and glad we did. It's been a great segment. We love the truth serum. Yeah. All right, boys. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, we'll do it again very soon. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this whole thing oh. plays out. But I got to get uh, I got to get you guys up on the air in Seattle because this SMU thing is I don't know, man, it just it just rubs me the wrong way. I'm sure they're I'm sure they're great people. I'm sure they're really cool, you know, alumni and students and they root for their team. But I don't know. It, it just doesn't do much for me. But you know what? At my age, it doesn't take a lot. To By be the way, I you. just I had I had 15 SMU alums say they were going to call you about Augusta <laughs> yeah. National. And, there you and, go. And, uh, <laughs> Give them my email. Give them my email. No, they don't want to talk. KJR. <laughs> S O F T Y K J R at gmail.com. Oh, you know what, Smokey? I don't even give a damn. If it means getting on to Augusta, you can give out my freaking phone number. Go for it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate your time. All right, guys. See ya. That's, uh, that's Dave Softy Mahler. We got to know him. 2000.